Good morning, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda Ben Shumer, and you're listening to Coffee with Chris, the time of the day where we share a cup of coffee and share a bit of the Word of God. All right, we are on our first Sidra, our first Aliyah for this new week, this new Torah portion. We are combining Sunday and Monday's portion into one. This is the Torah portion of Korach, or pronounced in English, Korah. This is all about the Korah, or the Korach Rebellion. Uh, in the book of Numbers where uh, Korah and 250 men made up of Levi and Reuben joined together for a coup d'etat to try to overthrow the rule, if you will, of Moses and Aaron and to assume leadership of B'nai Israel, the children of Israel. And uh, so this Torah portion takes place in Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 through 19. And it says, Now Korah, son of Yitzkar, the son of Kahat, which means he was a Levite, right? Son of Levi, along with Dathan and Abiram, or Datan and Abiram, sons of Eliav and On, the son of Pilat, descendants of Ruvain, they thought these Levites, these underclass Levites, if you will, these non-leadership Levites, if you will, thought that they can get a little clout if they combine their forces with Reuben, who was the firstborn. He was no longer the firstborn as far as rights and privileges. He gave that up when Reuben, the patriarch, slept with Bilhah, uh, Jacob's uh, uh, handmaid. Uh, and so it says... They rebelled against Moses. Siding with them were 250 men of Israel. Rebel rousers, a, a riot, a gang. You know, I mean, you have just a small group of people who want to make you believe that they represent a majority when they indeed only represent a minority and they kick and scream and holler, squeaky wheel gets the oil and they want to get their way. We see this on the news headlines every day. All these protests and, you know, screaming, ranting and raving and they want to make it look like it's hundreds of thousands when really it's not where they want to make you believe it rep represents the majority of opinion of the nation when it does not. This is the kind of same thing that has taken place. So, so it says, they rebelled against Moses, siding with them were 250 men of Israel, leaders of the community, key members of the council, men of reputation. They assembled themselves against Moses and Aaron and said to them, you take too much on yourselves. Uh, in a way, trying to say, uh, trying to be nice about it, trying to make it uh, a, a positive rebellion. Oh, we're here to help you. You take too much on yourself. And it says, after all, the entire community is holy. Is he lying there? No, the entire community is holy because the entire nation of Israel was taken out of the 70 nations of the world to be a special set apart nation for God. So he's right when he says that. Every one of them, and Adonai is among them, which is true. So why do you lift yourselves up above the assembly of Adonai? Ah, that's where he's mistaken. Why do you? He's assuming that Moses and Aaron just says, hey, we're going to call the shots. When indeed God says, no, I choose, I anoint, I appoint, I assign Moses and Aaron to call the shots, to be the leaders. So that's where they kind of went south and went wrong right there. When Moses heard this, he fell on his face. Why? Because he was scared? He was begging for mercy? Because he was praying, God help me? No, he was, he was heartbroken over this rebellion because he knew this wasn't going to end well for these people because they're coming against the anointed of God. After all, in the last Torah portion it says, or the Torah portion before, I can't remember which, but that Moses is the most humblest man on the planet, on the face of the earth. So he wasn't scared. He had no pride. He was worried on their behalf because of the rebellion. Now, uh, I'm just going to kind of make the long story short here. You know, they're saying, okay, let's have this contest to see who God approves of, to see who God wants to be the leader. Shouldn't have been a contest. Should have been obvious that Moses and Aaron were the leaders. So they get these uh, censers full of incense. Uh, uh, what happened last time? A couple of guys got some censers and put incense on it when God told them not to, when it wasn't the appointed time to do the incense, when it wasn't the appropriate mixture or concoction of incense that they were burning. Ah, that was Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu. They got burned by God. <laughs> Literally, they were burnt to a crisp and they were killed. These guys are just just cruising for a bruising and asking for trouble. They are just pushing their hubris, thinking they're very prideful, thinking they're going to get away with this, thinking that God's going to be pleased with their actions. So, um, 
we're going to explore uh, more this week about this Korok Rebellion. I'm going to leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger, but just suffice it to say that Korok, yes, there were a lot of the descendants and sons of Korok and Korok himself who were obliterated in this rebellion, but there were also some humble survivors, and they became the most dedicated servants, the most dedicated Levites, who sang and wrote praises to God that Israel had ever seen. Most of the Psalms were written by King David, yes, but there's a lot of Psalms that were written by the sons of Korok. After this rebellion, it says, hey, we know our place. We know who God has chosen to lead his people. We know what our place is, and we're going to praise and worship God, and we're going to put our support behind you, Moses, 100% all the way. And uh, so never go against God's anointed. Uh, we, we read this example all throughout Scripture. Even King David, even though Saul was wrong for persecuting and hounding him, David would not lift a finger against Saul. He let God take Saul out instead of uh, Saul being taken out by his own hand. So when we're, whenever we're threatened from outside sources or we know we're called to do something and people push a rail against it or try to stop it, don't fret, don't worry, uh, you know, don't, don't uh, get your nose bent out of shape. Say, okay, God, defend me. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. God has your back. He has your side. And if indeed you are called and appointed and anointed to do what you do, God is going to take care of you. He's going to squash this rebellion. Moses really didn't have to do anything. He didn't have to take up arms. All he did was pray and trust God. God took care of these rebels. Guys, thanks so much for listening. Go out there and have a great day. Shalom and God bless.